I actually had a whole other plan for things I wanted to film today, but then this dropped into my lap on my For You page literally yesterday and I had to rearrange because we are not, not going to talk about this while this is still topical. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Gitty Mary and on my channel I talk about sustainability and environmentalism and what consumers can do but I also talk about what companies are doing, how they're advertising themselves, how they're misleading consumers in some cases. Exactly. So recently I logged onto my social media and I feel like, I don't know about you guys, but we're living in a dystopia. It has become so abundantly clear whenever I go online that this is not the real world. This is just a dystopian version of whatever the real world is. I'm delusional. Two specific advertisement campaigns were brought to my attention within two days and I am so thoroughly annoyed that I want to talk about this. I have to talk about this. One is using sustainability in its advertisement lingo and that pissed me off. And another one is just fossil fuel companies trying to make fossil fuels sound quirky. So. Let's get into it. So Shell is partnering up with Fortnite. That's actually a little bit imprecise. Shell has made a creative island in the game Fortnite where they're promoting their new type of gasoline. V Nitro Power... No, no, no I can do this. V Power Nitro Plus. Making something that sounds just utterly ridiculous is a brand value at this point for this company. Anyway, they're not actually saying anything about sustainability. That's not necessarily my problem with this campaign, but I'll just share a little clip from it and then we're gonna talk about it afterwards. Okay, watch this. So Epic Games has revealed that Fortnite is declining in popularity and in revenue. And one of the ways that they're combating this, or one of the ways that they're trying to get back on track, is by collaborating with brands on their platform. One of those brands being Shell. Explore our new island in Fortnite, get ready for an adventure that is all about speed, acceleration and performance. Powered by Shell V Power Nitro Plus Premium Gasoline. Not even in the fictional worlds of gaming can we escape fossil fuels i just imagine like some 13 year old just logging in just driving a car not giving a fuck about gasoline <laughs> and just being bombarded with shell logos for no reason this is of course not the first time shell has interacted with brands that are specifically marketed towards the younger generation and younger consumers i remember it's like many years ago where shell worked with lego you could get like little gasoline tankers and you could do like a little petrol station and why? My problem with this is that this is a campaign that specifically targets the younger audience and the younger consumers. Especially so Gen C, which currently are in between the ages 11 to 26. Shell has also been working with gamers and streamers on popular media platforms, specifically targeting that demographic. But why is that, since a huge portion of the people in that demographic cannot drive or are not yet at the point where they are buying cars. Research from Media Matter revealed Shell sponsored live streams of gameplay on Twitch by at least six streamers with a combined 5.5 million followers. It also identified three more content creators on other platforms who were paid to promote the campaign in their videos. Those influencers, Media Matter said, have a combined 1.5 million Instagram followers, 8.5 million on TikTok and 11.6 million on YouTube. This campaign is reaching a lot of young people. And I think it's especially important to note that this campaign is specifically targeting a demographic that is more so than ever dealing with climate anxiety and climate uncertainty and generally just negative feelings related to climate change. Shell has a quarterly revenue of about $5 billion dollars from selling fossil fuels. And the burning of fossil fuels is the main contributor to climate change. This is something that scientists and fossil fuel companies have known since the 60s. And I don't know, perhaps you have heard that 100 companies are responsible for 71% of all global emissions since the 80s. Yeah, Shell is one of those 100 companies. Shell has a massive impact 
and a massive influence. And I think it's specifically interesting that they're targeting an audience that is ever more so worried about climate change, that have high numbers of anxiety related to climate change. And a large part of this demographic is extremely aware that they are the ones that are going to feel the effects of climate change more so than any other generation alive right now. A study from 2021 involving thousands of young people in 10 countries revealed that 75% were frightened by the climate emergency and almost half said that their feelings about climate change negatively impacted their daily lives. So I just cannot help but think that the reason why Shell is promoting that product in this fun, quirky, very carefree way. It's all about having fun with your friends, going on road trips, amazing. It's not because they want the consumers watching the campaign to go out right now and buy this product, their new type of gasoline. It's because that demographic is very likely both now and later to choose a different type of transportation. It's very likely that people in that generation will choose to take the train on vacation rather than flying or driving. So if you can convince that generation that it's so much fun, they are perhaps in the future a lot more likely to choose road trip in their car rather than doing it by train. I think that's at least an aspect of this campaign, that they want to influence this demographic to become better fossil fuel users in the future. And I don't know about you guys, but that's fucking disgusting. <laughs> if we are to play the devil's advocate here, you could argue that of course Shell has the right to promote the product like any other brand, as long as they're not lying or misleading consumers. And there are many regulations in place, especially so for fossil fuel companies, to not call that product sustainable. If they're using green lingo, if they're using sustainability lingo in their campaigns, people are going to be on that like a beetle on dog shit. So obviously they're trying to stay away from that now. Now, we have had years, years of fossil fuel companies using sustainability lingo and I so thoroughly hope that that's over. But now they're trying a different approach, which is using this fun, lighthearted, quirky discourse to sort of remove all seriousness from the effects of their product, instilling a different notion or a different mood in consumers or a different association related to that product, which in my opinion is just as misleading as calling it sustainable. And it is even more so terrifying that the companies that are at fault for climate change do not take any responsibility. With this climate anxious mentality, you're not being a very effective consumer. At least you're likely to think twice before buying something, or you might be likely to choose less impactful ways of transportation, both during your everyday life as well as when you're going on holiday. And you know what? That scares the living shit out of Shell. But that's not the only campaign I want to talk about today because, and this is something, this is a milestone for my platform, by the way. I have not talked about the Kardashians not one single time. I have never watched their show. I, 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 don't, I, do, I don't care so much. I don't really care what they do or what they say, except for when they bring sustainability into it. So Kim Kardashian has this shapewear company Skims and they just launched a new product, a bra with a built-in nipple. Now that in and of itself is not my problem. Check out this ad. The Earth's temperature is getting hotter and hotter. The sea levels are rising. The ice sheets are shrinking. And I'm not a scientist. But I do believe everyone can use their skill set to do their part. That's why I'm introducing a brand new bra with a built-in nipple. So no matter how hot it is, you'll always look cold. <laughs> I had no words when I saw this yesterday. I might be late. I've been on vacation for a week, so I might be late to it. But I had no words. I spat out my water. I had... A, I'm not a scientist anyway. Um, using sustainability and using global warming specifically to sell your product, a product like this, is so dystopian marketing. I have never seen anything like it whatsoever. Now, I would like to preface before I go into bashing this product further, I don't mind the product. I actually think the product is really cool. There are countless examples throughout fashion history that we are using indents to make fake nipples. We also saw it in Sex and the City. It's also something we saw a lot in the 80s and in the 70s. It's not a new phenomenon. I actually think it's really cute. Whether or not you prefer that personally is not a part of why I don't like this product. I also know that a lot of breast cancer survivors are really appreciative of the fact that they can have a look 
when they have a nipple if they have gotten their breasts removed. Overall, I think the product looks quite nice. That's not my issue with the product. My first issue is the materials and there's minimally being done to make sure that this material is actually sustainable. There's also the fact that these products are made just like any other fast fashion, so people are not getting compensated in a fair way for their labor, and it's made in sweatshops. I have not seen anything to counter that fact. I've seen countless celebrity brands taking literally zero responsibility. It, it annoys me, it frustrates me greatly. Anyway, um, that's one issue that I have with it. Not the product itself and what it can do for people's body dysmorphia. I think that's amazing and also sexy, cool. My main issue here is the fact that we're using climate change as a selling point to sell you something like this. And I don't want to see any company using the climate emergency to sell you products. I don't want to see that shit. There are regulations in place to make sure that this does not happen. However, these regulations and any kind of greenwashing legislation is still incredibly vague and still does not pick up on stuff like this. The reason why an ad like this falls through the cracks is because it doesn't promise you sustainability. Kim is not saying that the product is sustainable, she's just mentioning climate change. Sometimes, and I know that celebrities and rich people, especially when you're rich like this, have a different reality from normal consumers, but how out of touch do you have to be to do this with a straight face, to put your name on something like this? I think it is utterly embarrassing. I think it's embarrassing to be so tone deaf and so out of touch. Because of global warming, the thing that now so tragically makes your nipples soft, we have climate refugees all over the world, we have drought, we have famine and soft nipples. Thoughts and prayers. It's also the issue that polyester, the material that the vast majority of skins are made out of, polyester is synthetic. It's made from fossil materials, just like plastic and gasoline. And it means that it will never, ever, ever go away. It will just become smaller bits of plastic. It doesn't degrade, is, is my overall point. And polyester is a very large contributor to microplastic in our oceans. I've made several videos about plastic pollution and microplastic. I also have a video about polyester, both the upsides and the downsides to polyester. So I'll link all of those resources down below if you want to check them out. But overall, it's such a tone diff almost comical stretch to use sustainability and climate change in an ad for a product that in and of itself is a part of the problem. Oh yeah, and almost forgot, Vogue did some amazing, critical, investigative journalism. Oh, was that? Oh, no, no, my fault. This is what Vogue has to say. She announced that 10% of proceeds from sales will go to 1% for the planet, an international environmental organization that encourages businesses to donate, as the name suggests, 1% of their annual revenue to globally conscious causes. The skims proceeds are a one-time donation, however. So while the nipple bra remains as controversial as ever, maybe we'll see more people adopting it for the sake of the planet, of course. Honestly, I think there's a special place in hell for journalists that are not asking a single critical question and simply just keeps promoting the product as though this was an ad, even though it should have been an article. You could have asked so many questions. You could have been critical in so many different regards. There's also the notion that the 1% for the planet, I've talked about that in my uh, certification guide, is a voluntary donation. I have also heard way too many companies say that they will donate and then there's just radio silence, crickets, tumbleweed. But you're not actually doing anything. Also, simply donating to an organization doesn't take away from the fact that your own production line, that your own value chain is still unsustainable. And Cleaning out your own plate might be a good idea before starting to donate. I don't know, I think Kim should spend the money actually improving her own supply chain. Can we just please start to ask more of people whenever they choose to bring up climate change and sustainability in relation to their product, can that, can that then mean that we can then ask them critical questions that they are responsible for answering? That is, that is my Christmas wish. So, 
I think that's enough rage for one day. I hope that you got it out of your system along with me. Sometimes you just need to fucking yell into a pillow. I will be back in my next video where we're gonna talk about something a lot more lighthearted. Anyway, I just really wanted to get this out of my system because when stuff like this happens, especially during a time where our political climate is where it is, where so many things like this is happening in the world. It feels dystopian. We are then seeing fossil fuel companies advertising with gamers and nipple bras fighting global warming. I don't know, it's just... <sighs> I hope you guys are gonna take a deep breath with me. Wait, thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know down below what your thoughts are or if you've seen any other campaigns, ads, collaborations that you would like me to react to, let me know, attack me. Thank you so much for watching this video. Have an amazing day and take really good care of yourselves. Until next time, bye. Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys helped me create green zero waste contents and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye!